By all accounts, humanity should have died long before it reached the stars. Anybody with a basic knowledge in politics and history would have told you this. And could they be blamed for their presumptions? Just passively observing ancient human culture, it was clear to see their savagery and primitiveness. A warrior peoples, constantly building, constantly torn down, never uniting in any meaningful capacity. The hallmarks of a civilization doomed to stagnate and die. It is said by the scholars of the interstellar community that a sapient long-term species will have achieved complete or near-complete planetary unification by the time they have achieved the means of complete global communication. By the time they split the atom, they will have a single world government. By the time they are a truly space ring civilization, all former ideological, geopolitical and ethnic barriers will have been put aside for the common good of the species. This was the galactic standard, the common factor that every species shared, every species that possessed an ounce of reason, sense and an instinct to survive. When humanity took to the stars, it challenged that standard. They were still split into various factions and states when they breached the barrier between primitive civilization and spacefaring. Only semi-united under a loosely centralized authority known as the United Nations of Earth. And yet, somehow, they managed to do it all in less time than any member of the community. Intriguing, yes, but more emphasis was put on their brutal past. They had set records, and not the ideal kind. Most devastating global conflicts, little as time elapsed between major global conflicts, most nuclear weaponry detonated, highest number of total population killed by war throughout history. The lists went on and on, detailing just how aggressive and reckless this new fledgling species was. Cutthroat, brutal, and warmongering. They were estimated to collapse and die out, at most, several centuries. And so humanity was forgotten. Left to their fate in their own corner of the galaxy as more pressing issues arose within greater galactic politics. War was on the horizon with other great powers, and interest in humanity was forced to take lesser priority. So over time, they faded away. 2,000 years. When they finally contacted the interstellar community once again, they had flourished and prospered for 2,000 years, and had carved themselves a sizable area of space in the process. Gone was the naive, idealistic United Nations of Earth, governed by, as they put it, fools and tyrants. They introduced themselves as the Interplanetary Human Confederacy, and they were absolutely fascinating. In nearly every member of the community, Paris centralised in a monarch or council, which oversees the whole of a civilization. Humanity had done away with this, and had instead taken a completely opposite approach to governance than the rest of the galaxy. Every world of humanity was technically its own state, every new colony free to be developed in a way that the governor saw fit. The Interplanetary Human Confederacy was not a unified body at all. It was a myriad of separate republics and nations, all identifying under the banner of the Confederacy. And it had worked for them. Their colonies developed ten times faster than ours, unshackled with slow, clunky bureaucracy. They built fleets in a matter of weeks, whereas it took us months, or even years. They could adapt their economy, politics, society, in a way that no centralised nation of the community could, and it made them a formidable foe. Their cutthroat and power-hungry ways, at first seen only as a detriment to their civilization, had weeded out the weak and incompetent in their society, and their natural tendency to revolt against oppression had destroyed nearly all the tyrants. What was left of humanity, after 2,000 years, was a powerful, adaptive, proud society, led by the strongest and most empathetic of their civilization. To us in the interstellar community, their success resonated. Had our teachings and ways of life been inefficient? Wrong, even. Today, humanity eclipses most of the galaxy's greatest powers. They never united, still a loose collection of states and nations. They suffer near constant revolts, yet for every world that revolts, free more pledge their undying allegiance to the Confederacy. They have breached barriers never thought possible, invented technologies previously thought too difficult to understand. They are a squabbling, constantly infighting mess, and yet only the ancient empires can stand up to them now. It is apparent to every species every government, even the enigmatic ancients themselves, the time of humanity has come.